Welcome back to part two of the conclusion. And uh, from watching videos and making mistakes, I don't really like my diagrams. They're not the best, and this isn't the clearest. So I'm going to try my best. So hopefully you've familiarized yourself with geysers in the magma chamber so that you'll understand what I'm drawing and I and it'll be clearer to you. So I'm going to start with where I went wrong. And I went wrong with my very first description of a magma chamber and what happens. So there you have your magma chamber. And what I theorized was that a lake, when this domes, it would create fissures and the water would sink and hit the top of the magma chamber. And then as it entered the magma chamber, it would create gases. And these gases would create a pocket of supercharged steam. And as this dome does a pressure build, it would get more and more steam until it finally exploded in a very, very violent manner. But I was wrong. And the reason is because simple gravity. As you have the weight of the mantle pushing down, water when it comes in hits contact with the magma, the lava, will simply shoot straight back up. It will not have enough pressure, it will not have enough energy to create a pocket. It will simply rebound right back up. So there will be no pocket here. So I was wrong. But in trying to understand what, what was happening underneath there, I realized that the secret was in geysers. And it was in the way a geyser works. Now geysers aren't as secret as the way they work. It's simple. As I said, study up on it. We know how geysers work. First you have, let me just show you how the different things. We have mud holes, hot springs, and um, mud holes, hot springs, and geysers. Okay, quite simply, you have your magma down here heating up the ground. You have your ground here with your lake. Water comes down through many sources, groundwater, and it's heated. And as water arises, it can take away sediment and produce mud holes. If it comes up without much resistance and the ground is fairly hard, it will produce a simple spring. But to get an explosive geyser, two things can happen. A geyser can be plugged by salt. And if it's plugged by salt, it can create a cap and then pressure will build. Another way is that the water as it rises, what will happen is that it will be fed by cooler water coming in, different sources of water. The cold water drops down and the hotter water rises and it also has gas. The gas cannot, does not have enough energy to make it through this colder water coming down and it gets pushed out into little pockets and it builds and builds pressure here until it has enough force, enough counter force to blow past the gravity of the water coming down, the cooler water. And it'll blow out and then you'll have your geyser. So now that we know how geysers work, how does how there is a theory about how the magma chamber under Yellowstone erupts. And quite simply it's called a roof collapse. What happens is that a magma chamber, as it pushes up, will push ground away. So this is separating. And this lower portion, the cap right above it, has fractures in it. And this starts to push down from gravity. So as it's pushing up, you have doming over here, and it's pushing down. Eventually what they think happens is that this spreads far enough apart that the entire roof collapses. And as this big chunk of roof collapses, it falls in to the magma chamber, then magma is shot out 
wherever it can through cracks up through the sides it just blasts out and then you have a very very destructive force which would shroud the entire earth in ash if yellowstone blows up tomorrow it will cover the earth in ash okay that's the roof collapse theory so come back to my next video and we shall discover my theory